the first thought that came to mind was that we were working in a team environment, uh, giving access to uh, GPU runtime and CPU runtime across a team of students was something that have, we haven't figured out before. And we tried multiple, multiple uh, ways to synchronize the experimentation and have a platform that we can all share our collective knowledge on. That was one of the tougher challenges. And as a student, having little to no experience setting up GPU runtime, that was also a brand new challenge for us. And fortunately, we found that the instances on AWS were incredibly helpful in helping us fine tune the models and fit to our specific use case. My name is Vincent Xu. Uh, I recently graduated Carnegie Mellon University uh, through the Masters in Information Security Policy and Management, and I aspire to become a security engineer at Amazon. It was definitely a unique pattern of path that I took, so I pivoted from uh, economics and uh, I learned about risk management in general. And specifically, I always loved working with technology and from a adversarial mindset and defending something, that thought really led me into studying cybersecurity a little bit more. It's really quite an exciting area and there's just a lot of branch within. So my understanding, right, it's just really about kind of protecting something that we value. So it starts kind of from an adversarial mindset to think how could something go wrong? How could some, uh, somebody with malintent break something? Uh, it really kind of, kind of comes down to that. And uh, through this branch of thought, you have, you have your red teams, you have blue teams who, uh, who function as the simulated offensive side and also the defensive side to together work out a strategy to defend a valued system. There is this very uh, useful acronym that I always remember, uh, identify, protect, detect, respond, and recover. I won't go into the gory details, but really it starts with identifying something is wrong in your system. And uh, through investigating and identifying where that is coming from, uh, a response strategy can be planned and implemented through the iterative cycle. So what kind of comes down to is that is the notion that cybersecurity is definitely not a one-shot attempt. It's a cyclical program that enterprises need to build for the long term um, so that the defense can be built stronger and stronger over time. The inspiration behind uh, the research into text to SQL translation really started from identifying this need of cybersecurity to integrate some of the best practices from machine learning. So the inspiration started from uh, last summer where I interned at Amazon. The work mainly focused on det detection based on signals, based on scanning, and through the the recent revamp of just the exponential growth in machine learning and the just exciting space of AI, um, we started to see the need for heuristics to replicate some of the ways that humans perceive threats and in investigating into incidents. So one of the ways that we think it could be useful is to, uh, for analysts to, uh, to kind of harness the power of this AI. Typically, a cybersecurity engineer or security analyst need to look into uh, the investigation cycle to identify the, the threat and risks. Um, so one of the ways that they can do that is to put together a timeline. So identify the first attempt of a, um, a threat and until the actual exploitation of a vulnerability within our system. And over time, and multiple sources of, uh, of information, that timeline could be put together so we have a great clear picture to understand what is going on inside of our uh, system. One idea that's kind of common in this space is that correlation of multiple threads of uh, information. For example, the signature, the timeline, uh, threat intelligence, what is going on in the world. Are there any contacts in terms of uh, conflict that should we, we should play in into identifying this, this uh, attack vector. This kind of connects to the inspiration behind the text-to-sql translation project where 
uh, we want to use the power of AI to accelerate and make the process of investigation a lot more efficient. That is our goal. The consideration behind choosing uh, uh, SageMaker Studio Lab was that it is it's a great free platform that uh, students like our like myself could spin up and easily get hands-on machine learning tool sets and inf infrastructure in the shortest time possible. The way that the project worked is that we imp imported the system of code directly into the runtime. We were able to explore and identify the pros and cons of every model that we can think of. Witness the growth of large language models back in beginning of this year and we wanted to experiment that route. But considering the cost constraints and just long-term scaling, we actually realized that a uh, on-premise uh, in-house solution is the way to go. Across all these candidate models uh, listed on the leaderboard, we identified uh, the GAP model as one of the, one of the models that can really be uh, quite efficient and also helpful in extending the accessibility to uh, unforeseen data sets, uh, I, uh, which we will go over in the demo. One of the ways actually we identified GAP as a model is that it really works on cross-domain topics. For example, today we're talking about cybersecurity and bank fraud detection, but the data set actually got trained on would include uh, music, uh, movies, uh, food, uh, food recommendation, Yelp reviews. It's, it's really a, a plethora of data sets that are out there. And I believe that with the right pre-processing, the topic of choice is endless. So explore into uh, all these data sets, and I'm sure there are going to be incredible projects that are on the way. Based on our team, uh, six of us, master students, we basically only had access to laptop computers. So when it comes to training models, uh, a GPU will be really helpful and a strong one, a powerful one will be even better because time is of the essence and training could take a long time. When we came across uh, some of the GPU instances on AWS, we immediately saw the short, uh, the decrease of training time and inference. So on the other, uh, on the other hand, when you have a platform that, that shares the computing resources to multiple users, that's, a, that's also a platform that we can keep track of our experiment records and sharing that result, sharing that knowledge as the most efficient platform possible. So through using some other tooling that even tracks the metadata of that experiment a little bit more closer, we learned quite a lot just based on a well-provisioned infrastructure that computes for our uses. One thing that I specifically wanted to get out is that we wanted to simplify the process of setting, that, setting up that project so that everybody has a easier time setting up the process and really get, it, get to learn the code. We wanted to make sure that uh, the tool set of, of a text-to-SQL model is made available to everybody who wants to learn about it. And uh, along with the, with, the, uh, with the feature that I talked about earlier, that uh, GAP is really extendable to other topics that you may want to infer on, um, that is also made very clear. So it's kind of scaling this topic uh, more than just cybersecurity, uh, whether it's students or industry, that people have questions about their databases there is a way that, that that schema, that database could be translated and feed into this model so we can ask meaningful and insightful questions on. I think from a high level, um, when there is a input from our daily question, even with our, uh, the way that we speak it, speak it um, feeding that to a, to a language model could look a little bit different um, than how the model understands it. So, the natural language toolkit comes into play where um, the, a sentence is split into words and tokens that the model can understand and filters on a lot of the filler words that are not necessarily adding too much value to the, to the inference, but really focus on the interesting parts of our speech that could give some insights to the logic.
The idea is to have a shorter time between identification of events versus escalating that event to actual investigation from a security perspective. So the idea of a text to SQL model based on the question uh, and based on the specific schema within an enterprise is to give a first draft SQL query for the analyst to run and potentially fix and elevate on that SQL query to get more insight from gigantic data sets. From a customer's perspective, I, I think it really, uh, the idea behind that model is to have a more direct translation from the intuition as a security analyst to the actual investigation that they conduct. Essentially, put giving, giving the human element a little bit more emphasis in the process of analyzing security uh, events and detection. Typically, my experience working with a notebook-like cloud computing environment is that I, I'm, a, I really, I'm kind of a messy person, so I have a hard time setting up folders and directories within a, within a, uh, within a cloud computing environment. And automating that process and making, making the migration a little bit more seamless really benefited me as a developer where I can directly hop in and focus on the content rather than setting up the infrastructure. At first, I thought the model needed GPU to run, but actually without training, without fine tuning, the CPU actually was able to handle most of our use cases under a uh, quite short amount of time. Process of setting up environments. Um, when I was using SageMaker Studio Lab, actually I was able to use the terminal function to actually set up the right amount of environment in just the way our project needed to be. With the default uh, Conda environment built in, it's uh, really an easy plug and play. And uh, installing the right amount of uh, dependencies, even working with, uh, from, a, from, a, from a Python code to work with Java that was also delivered. So I'm, I'm extremely happy with that.